Hi there, this is Amit Bandari of TalkCondo.com and today we are at Capital Developments HQ at Young and St. Clair and we are with Matt Young who is the VP of Developments for Capital Developments. Matt, thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Awesome. So, uh, Matt, I cannot tell you how excited we are. Uh, when I say we, I'm talking about me and my brother and the rest of the Talk Condo team to finally be working on E2. We were incredibly fortunate to work on the first phase, E Condos. Um, in my opinion, uh, a landmark project, uh, and this I'm sure will be no different. Um, so thank you so much for allowing us to work on this incredible new development. Yeah, thanks for supporting it. Amazing. So uh, there's a lot of stuff that I'd like to cover. Um, first of all, obviously, I, I want to get a bit more information on the company, Capital Developments, on what Capital <coughs> Developments means to Young and Eglinton. Then I'd like to talk about Young and Eglinton, the neighborhood, and then and then also along there, talk about E2 condos. Uh, but before any of that, I'd like to get to know you because we've known each other for a long time, I yeah. think since 2010. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, how you got started in this industry, what made you get started in this industry, and how you ended up becoming the VP of Developments. Yeah, so I, I got started in the industry probably uh, about nine years ago now. Right. And um, I, I had a family member, uh, my uncle, who was in real estate, and as I was in university, I started kind of learning the ropes a little bit from him and always realized I wanted to be on the development side. Mm -hmm. I liked the creative aspect of it and uh, eventually uh, got my first job in development in 2009. Right. Uh, and that's when we started working together. Right. Um, and I launched six different projects uh, over three years um, at my prior company and then eventually left and uh, joined Capital Developments in 2012. So you're pretty awesome though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's your words, but okay. <laughs> Fair enough. So, uh, capital developments, huge name, especially in Young and Eglinton. It's almost like it's become synonymous with Young and Eglinton. Could you talk to us a bit about uh, capital developments? Yeah, so capital was formed by uh, Todd Cowan and Jordan Dermer uh, probably about 10 years ago, and uh, they were kind of partners working for a company uh, in Eastern Europe uh, for another 10 years called Tri Granite. Right. So this was an offshoot of Trizec Properties, and uh, over about 10 years, they built 10 million square feet of real estate, um, mostly shopping centers and hotels and office buildings. And uh, eventually, you know, their families were based here. They moved back to Canada in 2006, I believe. And, uh, and then they started Capital Development. So um, from there, they started looking at uh, different neighborhoods and, and what market they wanted to be in. Eventually, they honed in on Young and Egg. They realized that there's a lot of potential here. A new mm. crosstown was going to be uh, created, and they felt that this was going to be the new transit hub of the city. And uh, so they started investing in properties. And over the past, uh, you know, five years, we we bought and developed and sold uh, 155 Red yep. Path and 150 Red Path and the art That's shop. Right. And now this is a fourth condo that we're going to be doing in the area. So we know it well. Mm -hmm. uh, we love the neighborhood. And, um, you know, we're very excited about this one. Amazing. That's incredible foresight, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, the Young and Eglinton neighborhood. Um, I am personally a huge fan of the neighborhood. Uh, I actually live just down the street from Young Eglinton. It's an area that we, me and my family, visit a lot. Our office is literally just down the street from mm -hmm. England as well. Um, everything is there. I think you don't even need to venture out outwards much to be able to do the things that you want to do. I like, for instance, for us, our family doctor's there. Um, we, you know, we go to watch movies there, grocery shop there. Everything is there. So what is it from capital development standpoint, what is it for them? Like, what is it about Young and Eglinton specifically that you continually want to focus on, refocus on? And, and Yeah, so Young and Egg is interesting because it's really like a second city center. I mean, yeah. it's growing and it's kind of uh, building right now. There's a lot of new residential coming there, but there's lots of offices there. There's lots of great retail coming into the yeah. neighborhood. And obviously because of the Crosstown and the subway, it's one of the most connected uh, uh, intersections in the entire city. Uh, so for that reason, it, it offers a lot. It's also close to amazing schools and it's, yes. it's close to great neighborhoods. So Very we important. found that as we were selling our other projects in the past that um, there was a, a slightly more mature buyer who wanted to buy here. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, now that we're occupying our, our first phase, 155 Red Path, 
we're seeing that there's a lot of young families and people like that, and they want to be close to good schools, and they want yeah. to be close to great parks, and they want to be close to maybe where they grew up, where their family home is, mm -hmm. so they can go to dinner on Sunday. So there's a lot of uh, uh, great things about the neighborhood that's very urban, but there's also kind of that connection to um, kind of the, the single family home kind of suburban lifestyle uh, that people seem to really like. So. I think the other really cool thing is is you you have all these really fantastic amenities, but also the buildings that you guys are developing as well. They're so the, the design element you tended to see a lot more conservative design with a lot of these buildings uh, that you see in and around that area. But a lot of the ones that say capital developments have touched. They're very design heavy. They mm -hmm. bring a lot of international flair almost. Yeah, I mean, we we whenever we do any project, we always focus on design. We focus on location, but we want to deliver a superior product. So we really try to pay attention to a lot of the details. We always hire amazing architects and yeah. amazing interior designers for all our projects. And that would happen no matter what neighborhood we were building in. Yeah. But certainly there was a lack of that at Young and Egg. So yeah. even when we launched our first project, you know, the, I think the 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 tagline was uh, you know bringing design to Midtown yeah. because we didn't really feel like there was all that much uh, kind of contemporary, sophisticated design yeah. coming here. So it was something we really used to try and differentiate ourselves. And, you know, it, it worked. I mean, we had yeah, uh, no, three sure. amazing, successful projects. Uh, you know, we did a partnership with Carl Lagerfeld at the art shop. So that was mm -hmm. another area where we kind of tried to think outside the box and bring design into the area. So, um, you know, for us, it's very important. And any project we do, we really try and uh, hone in on that and make sure that the design is perfect. And, uh, and ultimately, it responds to who the buyers are going to be yep. and, and uh, the neighborhood. Amazing. Where do you see the uh, neighborhood going into the future? I know it's a very tough question to answer because, you know, it's, it's very hard to predict. But given what's happened and what's happening right now, where do you see it going into? I think it's, it's only getting better. I mean, it's certainly a growing neighborhood. I, if you think of any area in the city with like really, really uh, high growth, it's Young and Egg. I mean, yeah. there's, uh, there's still opportunities to develop in the area. So um, there's lots of cranes and, and uh, new towers are going to be going up over time. Um, the area is also now starting to get a lot of the really cool retailers that maybe you used to have only in downtown and now you're starting to see it at Young and Egg. So like La Carnita opened up and Sweet Jesus and Chiba Wine Bar. And you've got these, these great kind of uh, uh, entertainment destinations that you can go to. And I think that's only going to continue because as people mature and they start to you know, start their families and, and they grow up a little bit and they move to places like Young and Egg, they still want those amazing amenities that they used to have when they lived down at King and Bathurst. Right. So, yeah. um, so I think that's kind of where, where the neighborhood's going and, uh, and we're excited to be a part of it. Amazing. So... Um, I wanted to drill it down a little bit further, uh, right on the, the key intersection, uh, Young, Young and Eglinton on the uh, northeast corner. Um, E-Place, um, I understand it's going to be, a, uh, sam the, the area that I'm speaking about is sandwiched between E-Condos and E2. Mm -hmm. Could you speak to us a little bit about E-Place? Yeah, so E-Place is really... Uh a combination of the buildings that have been built and the Young and Eglinton Center, and it's kind of this retail destination. Uh, so, you know, you've got everything from um, uh, theaters to uh, restaurants to, uh, you know, convenience grocery. Uh, opportunities, grocery, LCBO. You have all those things there, and it's, it's all built within one kind of mini path connection uh, below grade. So, um, our project is going to be really interesting because it's going to connect directly into ePlace. So right. you'll be able to go directly from your lobby down an elevator and you'll be able to walk right into the subway, the Crosstown LRT, Young Eglinton Center. You'll have access to all these things without ever going outside. And in a country like Canada, that's an amazing opportunity. It's so, a fantastic yeah. opportunity. What about the park? Yeah, so there's a park directly beside our site that we're creating and it's in conjunction with the building next door to us. So we're kind of creating this uh, small kind of dog park area and there's a lack of, uh, of um, kind of smaller uh, places where you can take your dog or, or go Just and relax. grab a quick lunch or something yeah. in the area. So mm -hmm. we want to try and create something as part of the public realm. So it's an opportunity where people from outside will be able to enjoy it, uh, but it's also something that our building's going to open up onto and it's going to be an amazing asset for the people living in the building. So good. It's, it's very rare that you can tend to see something like like a green space as well, for direct, sure. you know, beside or connected to any particular urban redevelopment or development. Mm -hmm. So E2, the brand new development, that's really the, the hot topic of the day. Mm -hmm. um, I think the probably the, the killer piece of the puzzle 
for E2 is the direct connection to high-speed transit. For sure. Um, we've seen it time and time again across the city where if there's a particular building that has somewhat of a connection or direct connection, it's always the ones that tend to have the biggest demand. And the fact that this will have connection to two high-speed lines, I, personally, I think it's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. uh, could you speak to us about uh, that specific, specifically? Yeah, I mean, when, when we buy sites, we always, you know, you talk about location, 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 and yeah. Young and Eglinton as a neighborhood is an amazing location. But For sure. when you really hone in on a neighborhood, you start to identify what is the absolute best location Specific spots. in that yeah. neighborhood. And the one that's connected to the subway and connected to the LRT, that is the absolute best location in the neighborhood. Right. So it's really exciting for us. And that was a key uh, reason why we wanted to buy this property. Um, and we think it's going to be the game changer in terms of people who buy into this building because mm -hmm. they're going to have a convenience that no other building has. Right. Um, they're going to have access to go down to the path downtown. They're going to be able to get out to the airport. They'll be able to go east. This is really the biggest transit hub other than Young and Bloor in the entire country. Yep. Uh, and it's being created in front of our eyes right now. It's all under construction. So by the time people actually move into this building, it's going to be ready. It's going to be used and operational and they're going to have that convenience at their fingertips. So for us, it's a game changer. I think that's a very important point that you just touched on because when you're in our world, when on our side, when you're trying to, when you're discussing a, an opportunity, sometimes it, you're put in a position where you have to sort of educate and, and almost have the investor, the potential investor, imagine what is to become. Mm -hmm. The amazing thing with E2 is, is you, you can go to that intersection right now. <clears throat> Unfortunately, get stuck in a bit of a trap in traffic because of the <laughs> cross town, yeah. um, you know, construction. But it's it's happening. It's happening in front of our very eyes, for sure. Which is incredible to see. And not only that, you you can actually go and enjoy the the neighborhood as well, for sure. Can you talk to us uh, about the the building itself, the amenities? I know the lobby is going to be a, a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we look at designing these buildings, we always uh, take a step back and start to think about who the actual buyer is going to be or who the end user is going to be, whether it's a renter. Um, and, you know, hindsight is so great. We've got three different projects that we've, uh, that we've been able to work on and we've seen who bought into these projects and who's moving into these projects. Mm -hmm. uh, and we start to identify that there's a lot of young families and kind of people taking the next step in their lives uh, right. moving into this area. So we really tried to cater a building around them. Um, like so, me. Like you, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, we've got three bedroom units, we've got 11% three bedroom units in the building. So there's lots of opportunities if you're going to start and grow a young family to, to buy a unit that makes sense for you. Um, we've got a kids play area in the building that's going to have a rock climbing wall and, and a crafts area and other areas. So, you know, I know it's always a challenge for, for parents. I'm not a parent myself yet, but uh, it's always a challenge for parents to find things to do for their yeah. kids and to have that in the building, yeah. I think is an amazing convenience and amazing amenity for these young it families. It really is. <laughs> yeah. And then everything else, I mean, it's still designed beautifully. We still have lots of amazing amenities for, you know, even if you're not a parent or if you're a student or whatever else. So, you know, we've got an outdoor theater and, and games areas and party rooms, and we've got an amazing ground floor lounge that's going to be world class and look beautiful. It's almost kind of inspired by like a high end airport lounge where it'll have full Wi Fi and you'll be able to hang out in there and, and do work and ultimately be able to engage with, uh, with people in the building. And then, of course, the lobby is going to be stunning. I mean, that to us is it's the front door. Everybody who ever comes to visit you, whether it's a friend, your family or the pizza guy, they're all going to be walking through that lobby. And it's really, you know, a bit bragging rights when, right. uh, when you have this beautiful lobby, when you can say to your friends, hey, like, you know, this Let's is where I live, there. you know, yeah. exactly. So so that's those are all staples for us. And uh, yeah, we're really trying to cater the building around kind of that that buyer. Amazing. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about E2 in terms of like how tall it will be, how many suites there are going to be, and an overall mix of suites perhaps? Yeah, so the building's 48 stories tall. Okay. Um, there's going to be a little over 450 suites. Okay. Um, we're still working out a couple uh, things on the penthouse program to determine how many suites we're going to have there, but okay. uh, there'll be a little over 450 suites. And, uh, you know, we've got a, a broad mix of suites, but because there's uh, you know, we've identified a lot of families and, and that type of right. buyer who is, uh, we hope is going to buy here, 
Um, we've created more two-bedroom suites and more three-bedroom suites to accommodate that. Got it. So there's certainly more suites that are kind of family style, um, you know, but we do have a broad mix from, you know, small one bedrooms for investors all the way up to really well-proportioned three bedrooms. I think that, that suite makes, does make a lot of sense because even for myself, from my perspective, there, I am noticing that there is a big shift for, you know, my sort of profile of person with, you know, young families that are moving t to that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And and I think the other thing is, is to get a house in that neighborhood. It's is, impossible. It's very I mean, tough. It, it's, yeah. It's very tough. Yeah. And I think what you guys are doing in terms of the sweet mix makes a lot of sense because I think it will, I think, I, 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 I have got a very strong feeling that it will attract that kind of buyer. Yeah, and you know, Toronto's going through a bit of a transition now. Yeah. So I think for, for a long time, people kind of felt entitled to the opportunity to buy a single family home. And right. now that prices of homes have kind of gone crazy, mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of buyers are starting to recognize that it's totally acceptable and it's totally okay to raise a family in a mm -hmm. condo. And I think developers are now gonna have to start thinking about how to build buildings around those buyers because yeah, there's yeah, a lot of them yeah. and they're all looking for places to live. For sure. And uh, we really think this is the first uh, building that's really tried to cater towards those buyers in Toronto. Um, it still offers all the same conveniences you would get out of a downtown building, but you've you know got access to the best parks and to the best schools and, and you've got access to, to Toronto everything because yeah. of the subway and the LRT. For sure, yeah. for sure. Fantastic. So so excited to work on this. So I guess um, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of uh, investors that are interested. If they are interested, what would they what would they need to do? Yeah, so if you have clients that are interested, obviously they should, uh, you know, maintain a connection with you guys. You know, okay. we work with a very small group of realtors, especially when we launch these projects. Um, you know, there's people who have uh, worked on our projects in the past and we like to support them. So you guys obviously are, are one of those guys and uh, one of those groups and they should stay in touch with you. And when we're ready to release floor plans and to start signing, um, you'll be able to give them as much information as possible. Amazing. Yeah. So excited. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you for having right, me. Take care.